Dan Buglio here, and in this video we're going to be talking about the different types of technologies utilized in smoke eaters or smoke removal air cleaners. Primarily there's two main technologies that are used. You've got electronic and you've got filters. And within the electronic world, that's the one that's been most prevalent in the industry for a long time. Now there's a couple of myths surrounding the electronic smoke eaters. One is that you don't need to buy filters and therefore your cost of ownership is much less. And I'll get to that in a little while, but um, the technology which I employ for my customers is filter based and I'll, I'll explain some of those reasons why I do that. Um, electronic smoke eaters, just in general, uh, utilize ionizing wires to supercharge the smoke particles as they get drawn into the system by the fan. And then they have these collection cells where the uh, smoke particles are attracted to and captured. Now in theory this sounds great, all you've got to do is pull the cells out, wash them and you're done. What, what you may not realize is that these collection cells get dirty very quickly and as the smoke layers on them it becomes more and more difficult for these collection cells to capture new smoke, part smoke particles. Um, the result is that many of these particles are supercharged as they come into the system, but because the collection cells have gotten dirty, they pass right through and you still have smoke particles being blown around the space. So if you've ever worked with this technology and you feel like it really isn't working for you, this is why. And, and the analogy I like to use is that these collection cells are like a magnet and if you've ever played with a magnet as a kid you can only pick up so many paper clips and get so many on the bottom of the magnet before it no longer picks anything else up same thing holds true for the ionizer uh, for the electronic cells once they've gotten a layer of smoke on them they become more and more inefficient at collecting the new smoke so for that reason um, you have to be very meticulous about your maintenance in these electronic smoke eaters now, the myth that I talked about before is that it, they're wonderful because you never have to buy filters and look at all the money you're going to save. Uh, when it comes to electronic smoke eaters, that's partially true. Because if you can be meticulous about the maintenance of these cells, you're not going to have to buy filters to capture the smoke particles. Correct. Problem is, smoke is comprised of not only the particles, but invisible gases, fumes, and odors. Which means, even if this is working optimally, if there's no filters involved, you're not doing a darn thing for the odors, gases, or fumes. Uh, that being said, oftentimes they will employ a carbon filter. And many of the electronic smoke eater companies, these carbon filters are very pricey. So now that myth of I've got no filters to buy goes out the window when you have to get the carbon filters. Okay. The other thing that they don't tell you is that the cleaning process of electronic smoke eaters is very time consuming and messy. You literally have to dismantle the machine, take it apart, you have to soak these collection trays in a big tub of water, and not just water, a chemical solution which they'll sell to you. Many of these chemical solutions go for $160 for a five gallon jug. So once again, no filters to buy, but you still have maintenance. So not only do you have to dismantle it, soak it in a tub, then you've got to clean it, wash it off, <clears throat> and then you still have to let it dry before reassembling. It becomes extremely messy and time consuming, and time is money. So while you think you're saving some money on not having to buy the filters, you're trading that for a lot of man hours every month or every two weeks, realistically, to keep this thing maintained well enough to actually work. So as a result, I don't recommend electronic smoke eaters. Uh, they're inefficient. They're, they're time consuming, dirty, messy to clean, and the best day of performance is really the first day you own them, and it does go downhill from there. Because even with meticulous cleaning, these collection cells here, they've got a, a lifespan on them. And then when you gotta go buy new collection cells, they're four or five hundred dollars each. Not exactly cheap. Now, the technology I like is filter based, and it's pretty simple. Uh, from a filter based standpoint, you've got, you know, like the electronic, you've got a blower and a fan in there. It moves air. I mean, they all work the same. You've got to suck the smoke in and push the clean air out the other end. 
Filter-based solutions are a lot more simple because as long as you're changing filters 10 years from now, 20 years from now, you've got the same performance as you do on day one. You've really got no wearable parts like the electronic cells, like the ionizer wires. Um, and it, it's a pretty straightforward process. With us, we've got a pre-filter, you've got a carbon filter, and you've got a HEPA filter. Generally, the pre-filters, one per month, one every two months, and then the HEPA filters, one a year. So it, it's really straightforward. Um, the filters just generally work better. The pre-filters give, uh, take the brunt of the head of the smoke. The carbon filters will absorb the gases, fumes, and odors. And then lastly, you've got the HEPA filter, which deals with the ultra-fine smoke particles. Um, those are the two main technologies that are involved in smoke removal. And personally, I've bet my business on the filter-based approach. So I hope that all makes sense, and we'll catch you in the next video. Thanks very much.